Have you ever wondered how to make LEGO Power Functions motors work with LEGO Mindstorms? In this video, I will go over two ways that I found to do it and list the pros and cons of each. This first way is a bit unconventional, but it still works. This first method involves using an EV3 motor to turn on and off a Power Functions battery box. Using this method, you can create something like this. And a simple program like this will give you something that works like so. Now, let's have a look at the pros and cons of this way. Firstly, a good thing about this way is that if you're watching this video, the odds are you already have LEGO Mindstorms and LEGO Power Functions. The major con of this method is that it requires a lot of parts to make. Another con of this method is that it takes a couple of extra steps in order for the EV3 to turn on the Power Functions motor. What I mean by that is, in order for the Power Functions motor to turn on, the EV3 needs to turn on another EV3 motor, which turns on a battery box, which then turns on the Power Functions motor. But wait, don't leave yet. When you see this cable, you probably think, oh, I'm just going to take this and plug one end into the intelligent brick and the other into a Power Functions motor. Well, it's not as simple as just that. Originally, this cable was created so that people can use the old LEGO Mindstorms RCX motors with the NXT Intelligent Brick. Knowing that, you can see that the LEGO Power Functions cable on the left does not fit the old RCX cable on the right. You will need one of these LEGO Power Functions extension cables. You can see that both sides of the dark gray end have a Power Functions cable, and the bottom of the light gray end as a LEGO Mindstorms RCX cable. With that being said, if you're going to use any of the old LEGO Mindstorms RCX motors, or any other motor similar to this, you can completely skip this step. Alright, let's get this cable working. Here, I add a LEGO Power Functions extension cable onto the end of the converter cable, and put a Power Functions motor on the end of it. Alright, now let's get that motor running. You can't use a normal motor programming block for this. The reason being is that LEGO Mindstorm's EV3 motors have a computer chip in them that tells the EV3 what type of motor it is. LEGO Power Functions motors don't have those chips inside of them. If you look at the converter cable, you could see that there's only three wires inside of it instead of the normal six. Those three wires are the ones that tell the EV3 what motor or sensor is plugged into it. Here, I am telling the EV3 to turn on the motor for 5 seconds after the button is pushed. If I use this program, this is what would happen. The reason the motor shut down early is because the EV3 didn't detect anything on the motor port. Even if you put that program in a loop, it still wouldn't work. It's obvious now that we need to fool the EV3 in order to make it think that there's a motor there. This can easily be done by using two unregulated motor blocks that are constantly changing the motor speed. The unregulated motor block can be found under the Advanced tab in the programming software. I will go over what unregulated motor is later in the video. The stop motor block is very important. If you don't have it, then the motor will continue to spin even after the program has ended. So if I wanted to run the motor for 5 seconds at full speed after the button is pushed, the program would look like this. Here is the motor in action. Knowing this, you can do a lot of fancy stuff with it. For example, this program works like this. You can get even fancier by doing something like this. The one big pro of this way is that it's direct. The EV3 controls the motor directly. A con of this method is that these cables can be expensive and hard to find. I just got lucky and found a guy on eBay selling three of them for $20. Look in the video description if you want to try to get your hands on some of these cables. Another con of this method is that you're using the LEGO Power Functions motor as an unregulated motor. 
I'm not going to go into much detail about this, but one thing that a normal motor block does, which is a regulated motor, keeps the voltage constant to the motor no matter the battery level. With an unregulated motor, the motor is given whatever voltage the battery is at. This means that as the EV3 battery drains, the motor will slow down and get less powerful. For example, if I were to program an unregulated motor to spin for one second, it may not accomplish as many rotations on a low battery as it would a full battery. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching.